Hi everyone, Lauren Culp here, the publisher and CEO at CUNSA.com. We are so excited to be coming back to you with another three questions video interview, joined by a very special guest today. Matt Good, the Senior Vice President and General Manager of Elan Advisory Services is with us. I'm so excited for this conversation for so many reasons, not the least of which is that Matt will be speaking at our mini conference on change on May 12th. So we hope to see you there as well. Matt, thanks so much for being here today. Thank you. I appreciate this opportunity, Lauren. We're really excited. And we're talking all about payments and credit unions today. So let's just dive right in. Matt, Sounds good. Like, what are some current trends in the payments industry that credit unions should be aware of? Well, let me uh, start off, if I could, Lauren, just by kind of explaining a little bit about who Alon is. And then I'd sure. love to jump into that. That is an absolutely great question. Uh, Alon Advisory Services, and, I, and I'm, as you said, general manager and sales leader for the organization. We've been in business since the mid since the late 1960s. We were actually founded in 1968 when our cornerstone program, the Align Credit Card Program, was founded. Where we've ever since 1968 worked with credit unions to help them provide industry-leading credit card solutions to their members, as well as great service that they would expect, uh, as well as underwriting and marketing programs. And have grown to the point where we work with over 300 credit unions nationwide, and also work with them on their business solutions which uh, with our partner, Elevon, can provide merchant services as well as commercial card s services as well and mortgage services. And over that whole period of time, uh, I think you would agree with me and our listeners would agree, your viewers, that last year was a year that none of us really want to go through again. Uh, it was an unanticipated year. And, but because of that, there were some major trends that occurred uh, that either started because of the pandemic or were greatly expedited that credit unions really need to be prepared for or start preparing for as we head into this so-called new normal. Uh, and I would say, Lauren, there's three that credit unions really need to be looking out for. I think number one is all things digital. Mm -hmm. um, now, the industry and credit unions and issuers and merchant providers have been preparing for years for the fact that this is a digital business now, whether you're talking about the servicing aspect, applying for a card, but last year greatly expedited this. Uh, we did a study recently with payments.com that showed that 45% of American consumers since the onset of the pandemic a year ago, March, have started doing their retail shopping via digital channels, whether you're talking about online, through a mobile app, a digital wallet, or contactless payments. But even more significant is almost four out of five of those say they're not going back. Um, I'll give you, a, if I, you don't mind, I'll give you a personal example, and we could probably talk all day and share personal examples, but uh, my wife, Lisa, and I have two school-age daughters, 11 and 13, and it's been one of my jobs in our house since our first daughter was born to do our grocery shopping. I actually, believe it or not, strange as it is, I enjoy doing that. I like pushing a cart around the store and, and doing that every Sunday evening. Well, our local national grocery chain for years has had curbside pickup service. It's not new where you can, through your mobile app, fill out your order, they tell you when to come, uh, and they have your card on file, so I don't have to submit cash or, or a card when I show up. I've never wanted to do that. Well, at the onset of the pandemic, I thought, you know, I'm gonna give this a shot. Well, I'm not going back. I, I just found another two hours every weekend uh, because of this. And we can talk about countless examples where members out there are saying, are starting to do this because of the pandemic and saying, I don't wanna go back. So credit unions need to be prepared for that, as well as the businesses that credit unions work with, those who do work with businesses, 82% oh, of them have said in the last year, they've changed how they accept payments because of the pandemic. So as a credit union, you, you just need to be prepared for this to remain relevant in your members' lives. Payments is a big part of it. And you have to be sure that you have the digital payment capabilities available. So that's one major trend. I think a second major trend without a dollar rewards. Um, I've been in this business, Lauren, for over 25 years, and I can remember the days when to be competitive, you needed to have a low rate, no annual fee card. Members were saying, we're, we don't want to pay for this, for this product. Well, it's gone past that to where they're saying, we not only want to, don't want to pay for it, we want you to pay us for it. <laughs> Again, not a new trend, uh, but the pandemic has greatly changed how rewards are handled. So 14 months ago is all about travel, right? Well, travel certainly in the last year has been disrupted. We all hope it's coming back, but members have been demanding that their credit unions be able to do things like provide additional rewards for 
purchasing internet services, streaming services, grocery shopping, curbside dining. So we've had to quickly as an industry adapt our products to be able to, to match that. The other trend with rewards is it's there's been a 40% increase in the average cost of running a rewards program in the last five years, largely because of what I just said. So again, as a credit union, you have to look at it and go, if we're going to be top of wallet and be the, the card product that our members want and need, we've got to be able to uh, have these competitive rewards. Um, and then I think the third and final trend I would mention is in terms of risk and losses. Uh, the you know, last year, I'm not an economist, and but every, just about every economist that I read or expert in the industry, when we started this pandemic, we all said, oh boy, this is going to be rough with losses and with delinquencies. Surprise, this all didn't happen. It was in fact the opposite. Uh, the industry paid down their credit card balances by like $83 billion. And there are a number of reasons for this. Uh, one reason, of course, is, is the government assistance programs with over $3.7 trillion in, in stimulus, uh, the great forbearance and forgiveness programs that the credit unions did last year in the issuers. Um, we've also found that credit union members, next to making sure they have a roof over their head and make their mortgage and rent payments, they're taking care of their credit card because they need liquidity. The other thing interesting is that bankruptcies were, at, according to the Wall Street Journal, at a 35-year low last year. All of this doesn't make sense really, but it's good news. However, credit unions need to prepare for the fact not to be doom and gloom, but that can't continue forever. Forgiveness and forbearance programs can't continue forever. Government stimulus arguably can't forever. And bankruptcies can't continue to be at a 1985 low. So what credit unions need to do is really be sure they're, they're measuring the risk in their portfolio and they have plans in place to prepare for it uh, when that comes. When is that gonna happen? I don't know. Uh, it could be later this year. It could be a two or three years down the road, but you just need to be prepared for that. So I think the digital, the rewards, and the take, keeping an eye on risk are definitely trends that credit unions should be watching. And that's so interesting because, like you said, that's not something that any of us really anticipated. And so no. it's so important to keep an eye on those trends. I'm curious, what does Alon recommend credit unions do to prepare for some of these trends and to be able to offer those attractive payment solutions to their members that you talked about? Well, there's, there's really, that's a great and key question. There's three important things that credit unions, I think, we well, have three options, really. Uh, one option is you sit it out completely. You know, you say, look, this is not our niche. Nobody's better at doing auto loans or mortgage loans or taking care of our members. We're just going to stay, avoid the risk and, and, uh, and the exposure. You know, the benefit is it's not, a, it's, it's inexpensive and, the, and you, you don't have that risk. However, again, you become less relevant in your members' lives. You know, they're, they're going to, you're almost forcing them then to talk to the credit union or even worse, the bank down the street to be able to take care of all their needs. So that's not necessarily a great option. Second option is you go all in and you say, we're going to get the expertise. We're going to hire the expertise. We're going to invest in the scale to be able to build up our business uh, in the payments world to be able to keep up. That, that's going to involve when you're talking about digital capabilities, talking to different technology companies and being able to form a plan, um, the, the, the benefit of that as a credit union is you control the whole experience for your member. The drawback is it takes a lot of investment in capital, a lot of, lot of investment in expertise to be able to do that. Um, and if you're not one of the largest credit unions, it may be difficult to do that and be top of wallet. So a third option would be to partner with somebody like Alon, who is an agent issuer who, when you partner with them, we take on all the expense, we take on the liability, but we enable you to, uh, to offer industry leading products that we create that is branded in your name, has your look and feel, that can earn you some good income while really keeping up with your members' needs. So that's a third option that, that we'd love to talk with credit unions about if, if that's the direction that they're heading. Those are such great options. And it's so interesting too, because there, there are so many different pieces that are moving that if you want to remain relevant and want to be top of wallet, like you said, there's a lot to think about as we've seen so much happening in the marketplace. So I'm curious then, what does partnering with Elan do to support credit unions in addressing these payments industry trends? If they choose to go that direction, partner, what would what would that look like? Well, I think, I think you know, what we would do is we see this as you really growing in the payments business. Because again, you have the industry leading products to be able to offer, you earn great income off of this. We partner together 
to be able to take care of to take care of the members. We can't do it without the credit union's relationship with the members, and and then we provide the expertise and the and the um, the scale. I think looking back at the last year is kind of indicative of, of what we like to bring to the credit unions because of the upheaval in, in, in our lives, we did have to do a lot of investment and do some changes. So for example, we talked about digital earlier. Uh, we've, been, we've been investing for years in digital servicing capabilities, but we had to greatly enhance that last year so that there is do-it-yourself service capability through your mobile app, through the credit union. Um, we, we've definitely enhanced our fraud detection capabilities knowing that there's concern, understandable, among members when it comes to doing digital payments and fraud. Uh, one thing that's really changed in the business that we've invested in that would be difficult for a lot of credit unions to be able to do is in the way you accept applications. It used to be, Lauren, as we both remember just a few years ago, you would apply for a card either through accepting a direct mail offer by going to a website or walking into a credit union branch and applying. Well, today we have capabilities and we've introduced them in the last year, like text to apply. Mm -hmm. Like the credit union can provide a QR code to their member. They scan their phone over in a matter of minutes, apply for the card, be approved and be moving on. We're able to work with the credit union to pre-fill a lot of the credit union members information into a digital app location to make it quicker to get the product. So we've done things like this. We've worked with companies like PayPal and Samsung and Google and other card on file merchants so you can provision your card credentials into your digital wallet. So these are things that we team up with the credit unions to be able to do. So, and then we've also, of course, enhanced our reward products as well so that this product is top of wallet for the credit unions. And they can offer to be proud of this product that they offer to their, men, to their members while focusing on what their niche is. That's amazing. And it's so interesting too. I remember when I was putting my, I had an Amex card, don't tell anyone. I have an Amex card and I was also putting my credit union card in my digital wallet. And it was a lot easier to put the Amex in than it was the credit union. So I can see the real need for credit unions to be able to compete in the digital experience with this. So I'll give you a bonus question. Any last thoughts that you would like to leave for our viewers today? You know, I think, um, Lauren, I've talked a lot about in the last few minutes about how this industry has changed. And there has been just am amazing, tremendous change, particularly in the last year. But there's one thing that has not changed. And that's what makes this important is the credit unions themselves. Um, I've been so impressed in the last year with how credit unions have, not surprisingly, as we'd expect them to do, have taken care of their members, have taken care of the employees. And whether we're in a face-to-face -face world like we're used to, or this new digital world, I think the important aspect of this is the care that credit unions have for their members. And that will never change, no matter how we do business, whether it be virtually or in person. So I just applaud the industry for that. Absolutely. Well, it has been so great chatting with you, Matt. And for any of our viewers out there, if you want more from Matt, come to our CU Insight MiniCon on May 12th, All About Change. Matt is going to deep dive into some more payments industry trends that credit unions should be aware of. I cannot wait, Matt. It's going to be a great time. Thank you. Looking forward to it. We are too. Well, thank you so much. Again, Matt Good, Senior Vice President of Elan Advisory Services. We'll put some contact information in the post for anyone who would like more information. And in the meantime, Matt, thanks again and wish you a great day. Thanks. Same to you, Lauren. Take care. Thanks. Take care.